stats? No. What, what, what is my game doing? No. Uh, what, 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 what is happening? What, what? Right, so today I wanted to make a game, but let's be honest here, a lot of the tools that we use to make games are like really boring. I wanted to kind of challenge myself today and see if I can make a game using nothing but online tools. Now I know this is possible, but definitely because you don't have the full processing power of your computer, it definitely does pose a few challenges. So I wanted to see how much of an advanced game I can make using nothing but things I could find on the internet. So the general structure that I wanna follow is to kind of do some planning first and then later on we'll basically come up with a plan and then we'll kind of work from there as we go on so i kind of already had an idea of what i wanted to make i'll be making like a pong type game with a little bit of a competitive twist so there will be some extra bells and whistles that kind of go along here so of course we'll have pong there's a few elements involved in pong so we have like the paddle we have the ball so uh we'll have paddle going on here, there's two paddles, and there's a ball that kind of just goes all over the place. So uh, what's going to be a little bit different from this kind of Pong is I wanted to have, first of all, some kind of control gimmick. So instead of, you know, just moving up and down, I think I what I want to have is there be some kind of gravity. So I'll say the paddle has gravity. And what I mean by gravity, it'll be like Flappy Bird controls. And so you'll be able to like jump and, you know, you'll go constantly be going down. And let's see, what else can we do here? Um, so I want to think about the ball next. So the ball will also have gravity. So we'll say gravity. It'll kind of like bounce on the floor like this, you know. And then, you know, when you hit the ball, it will kind of like shoot off. You have like a paddle here. When you hit here, it'll go kind of flying off in this general direction or something like that. I kind of want this to, over time, get faster. And then maybe we can have some kind of score. So, of course, we would need to keep score. And then maybe we can use this score for something. So I think what I want to have is to be able to spend the score on something, maybe kind of like power-up of some sort. So there will be some kind of like power-up. Oh, what is, what is this power up going to be? So I think I, I think I want it to be sort of like a super shot. So it'll go really fast. And then the opponent will have to try to see if they can keep up. I think this is pretty much all I want to do with this. So let's, uh, let's just get right into making the things. So the main tools that I want to use for this project... Uh, before I go get into any sort of the actual making things, the tools, of course, we'll need the engine. Let's see, we'll need some kind of like something to make graphics with. It'd be cool to have some sound involved too. I'm, I don't think I want any music for this. Pong itself is already a simple game. So I think this is pretty much all we're going to be needing. So I think for the sound, there's this really cool tool, JSFXer. Yeah, this thing right here. It's really cool for making like 8-bit sounds, got its own like sound generation and all that. So I think I want to use that. Graphics, since we're going for that kind of retro feel, something that makes pixel art is great. I'm used to using Piskel for that, but I might want to see if I can find something that can also do some kind of advanced graphics. So maybe I can have like this kind of like shining a little bit. I don't know. I don't know uh, if that'll be something I want to add in, but you know, we'll see. And the engine, this one I definitely know. I'm going to be using a JavaScript engine called uh, Kaboom. It's got the component object model type thing going on, so sort of like what Unity has, but it's also written in pure JavaScript, so you can use pretty much anything that uh, your browser can run. So, uh, let's get started. I think I want to start with the graphics. I'll go ahead and head over to Piskel. So, I'll start off with the, the basic, you know. And that's really bad. <laughs> I'm not really that good with pixel art. I'm not a pixel artist at all. I is this even the right aspect ratio? This should be... Oh, well, I miscounted. Okay, so this is a start. I might want to, you know, stick around. Maybe I'll add these in. It's looking kind of all right. Like, rounded. Maybe I want this to be a little taller, though. Be like 16. It's a good size. Yeah. Pixel art's nice. And art in general is nice, because you can just relax and put pixels in places. Especially if you're not, like, a busy artist, you know, you just kind of place things in general areas and hope it works and, uh you know part of the time it does part of the time it doesn't maybe we can add some ornamentation to that eh it's kind of subtracting from it really yeah i think i'll just stay with a simple shape like that yeah this right here there we go so i have my, I have my pedal sprite something i do want to implement though is since we're gonna be having a power up i want to have some something separate for that so i'll, done this. I'll just add this as a new frame and maybe we can have some kind of like color difference in it so something kind of reddish orange 
Ooh, I like the green. I'm a little biased because my favorite color is green, but you know, I think I think this might actually be what we're looking for. And then I can surround this with like an aura. So it's, yeah, like that. So uh, yeah, we have the two sprites. So I have a petal sprite. We're also going to be needing a ball. Shouldn't be anything too large. So I think something like six by six should work just fine. Well, let's start off really simple. Pong has a square ball. I don't think there's really much we can do with the ball. Maybe when uh, when it's hit, we can have the same green color that we used in the the paddle. Sure, we can do that. Let's see. I don't want to. I don't want to do this because when it's hit, it will be facing a different direction each time. So I don't necessarily want to do something that is side bias. Oh, I, th I like this one. It's kind of circly. It's got, it's got the, the things you'd expect from something that's got some energy to it. Uh, so I think that's pretty much going to be it for graphics. I mean, we don't have any other elements, really. The score, uh, I could make a font, but I'd rather just stick to using the text system. Again, we want to just go for that simplicity. What's next, then? I think next I want to go for the actual implementation because the sound, we can get the sounds from that. So I'm going to be using a tool called Replit, which is an online IDE of sorts. It's got really nice implementation of Kaboom. Yeah, it's got the entire user interface ready for us to, you know, start making the game. So I'll go ahead and start off by making two paddles. So this is the, the code that I use to implement these paddles. And uh, I'll sort of explain what's happening here. Each of these paddles has their own variable declaration and it's equal to this add thing. And as I mentioned before, Kaboom has a sort of component object model type of system. So this will create an object and these are all of the components actually. The rect component draws a rectangle. I'll end up replacing these with the paddles once I get to that later. Area handles collision. So that'll allow us to detect whether the ball is touching the paddle or not. Positioning originally set it to this height divided by two things. It starts in the center of the screen. This one's the most interesting actually. So body is a built-in kaboom thing. It's originally meant for things like players and it has a thing that it will allow us to jump. It also adds gravity and then anything with just quotes inside of the object gets treated as like a tag. So if you're used to things like unity that's sort of what this is supposed to handle. So I'll go ahead and start implementing actually some of these graphics. Something that's really nice about Pascal is that you can export in like a bunch of really useful formats, especially like the zip archives, which contains like both of them at the same time. And so all I should need to do is just select these paddles and then drag them into the sprite section. And yeah, both of them are input. Same thing for the ball. There we go. So I'll go ahead and start replacing these. It's something I just realized that, that these actually were completely wrong. Instead of a 4x16, I ended up making the sprite 8x16. Yeah, I made them 8x16. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I'll adjust these accordingly. Yeah, there we go. So something I just now realized that these are a little small. So I'm going to go into the settings and make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's good. One issue we also have is that the body has nothing to collide with, so it's just kind of falling through the floor. Easy fix would just make a few, you know, floor things. So if you see, if I run the code now, it will just kind of like fall to the floor. Though it's kind of janky in that I had to make the height like really large so that, you know, if the paddles ever go way too fast to the point where they don't collide, you know, that's not much of an issue. I just now realize that we can also go through the ceiling, so uh, we'll also, I'll also just ultimate programmer method this and uh oh so that actually gives me the excuse to work on the functionality part we can just use the key press event for that and we'll actually have to come up with some key binds uh you know what? i'll make those variables so i'll use like fj f for the left and j for the right remember how we made these bodies earlier bodies have this capability to just jump which is convenient because that's exactly what we need so left pedal.jump is really the only thing we need and uh you know i'll set this to 100 for the time being and see how that fares out oh uh oh whoops oh it's those darn semicolons yeah there we go so uh if we jump yeah it could be a little bit uh a little bit jumpier yeah there we go oh whoa nope uh, maybe not that much. See, this is the magic of game development. Sometimes it's just try until it feels right. Eh, that's about right. Yeah, I like this. This is good. One issue, uh, this sprite is flipped. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Instead of making an entirely new sprite for it, in theory, if I scale it by negative one, this should just flip it. Yeah, like that. Though it is a little offset still. There we go. Cool and good. We're missing the most important part, of course, so we got the paddles done and over with. So now comes the ball. Make a new thing for the ball. 
So something that's actually nice about Kaboom is that when you make a sprite, it'll actually automatically make an area thing for you, so I don't actually need to calculate the areas myself. I did that for the paddles because I wanted to be explicit, just in case I wanted to make it something that was uh, you know, a little thinner. But for the ball, I definitely know that it will be sticking to the 6x6, so it's safe to just keep that as it is. And then, you know, I'll also get this a body as well. So I think now... Oh. What's those gosh darn semicolons? Yeah, okay, so we have a ball. I'll go ahead and make the ball move on its own. To hook onto the update function of this thing, I'll just do ball.onUpdate. Hey, post-recording Brandon here. Something I forgot to mention is that Kaboom has no general update function, so I'm using the ball as a sort of global game object here. It's a little hacky, but it gets the job done. Also, this code next section is getting a little lengthy, so I'll skip the majority of it and get to the good parts. If you want to, I'll link the game's rebel down below so you can look at the code yourself and maybe even see what's happening. I'll even leave some comments in there if you feel so inclined. All right, back to the video. Oh, operator time see Oh, again. Oh, whoops. And now I think our ball should oscillate. Yeah, it does. Although that was kind of a weird collision thing. Let's see if this one does it as well. Okay, yeah, so my right thing actually has bad collision. All right, after tinkering around with it for a little bit, I think I've got something working. Now I just need to make it so that the ball kind of just doesn't fall to the ground. Yeah, there we go. Now we kind of have a working sort of a game, I guess this counts. So I think this calls for some sound effects to be added. I'll move over to JSFXer. So of course we have these envelopes, which will control the overall shape of the sound. We got the frequency. These all just affect various aspects of the tone. Usually what I like to do is start with the generator and then kind of tweak it to my liking after. For the first one, I'll do like the bounce. So whenever the ball bounces on the floor, that can be kind of like a hit. Ooh, this is actually nice. So what do we got here? Yeah, the sawtooth I like quite a bit. Oh, I think I wanted to start a little lower. This right here. Perfect. So I'll export this as JSFXR. All bounce. Cool, so I'll go on to making, what else do we need? Uh, when it hits the paddle, I guess that can be its own sound. Yeah, that'll work. We'll also need a sound for when you score. So that'll be as simple as like, a, yeah, like one of these. Yeah, something like this. Some nice short and indicator-y, you know? And then last but not least, I'd like to have a power-up sound for when you get the, like, the super power-up, which I actually still need to plan that out. <laughs> to use one of these power-up sounds. So all I should need to do is just drag this into the kaboom thing. Yeah, there we go. So then I guess next up would just be the score system. And now if we sort of jump... Oh! That's not... Whoa! whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what is my game doing? No. Uh, what, 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 what is happening? What, what? Okay, so clearly that's a bug. All's good. Now we just need a way to display the score. So that means we're going to need to make two more objects that hold just the score text for both sides. Let's see. Yep, that works. Now comes the actual fun part, which is the special thing that we were going to add to the paddle. All that's left now is just to have this power up. To have this work, I'm going to have it so that you can spend like, I don't know, like five points and you can power up your paddle and the thing will be shot off really fast. So maybe the ball speed can be like multiplied by two or something. One bug fix later. So this appears to be some kind of undocumented feature, but to switch the sprite of an object, you can edit its sprite ID and set it to the name of the sprite that you want to set it to, and that will change the sprite. So now if I run this program, uh, what will happen is I can get pl player one up to five. And once that happens, I can turn into this green one and it'll go really fast once I... Uh, that. Of course we need to update the text, I can go ahead and do that real quick. The ultimate strategy here is to get it to bounce as high as you can, because that way you can kind of get it to sort of be hard to hit. Cool. Now uh, we have this issue where the ball velocity kind of just stays the same. That can get kind of annoying after a while. So 
I think what I want to do now is to reset the velocity once the ball has been, you know, claimed as a point. Yep, that doubles the speed, and yeah, cool, goes back. Good to know. So that's pretty much everything we had planned. So we have, let's go back to the whiteboard. We have the power up. Yep, ball goes really fast. Faster over time, the power up already makes it go really fast. So there's kind of no point in having it go faster over time. So I think it's pretty much all done.